Spread your legs. Clear. Let's go. What up, what up, yo? What do you know what it is? Your boy Pistol Pete. Welcome back to Dog in the Yard. And today we got 10 Toes Down. 10 Toes uh, did 21 years. Uh, been home 10 years. Uh, straight out of Sugar Hill, Harlem. Uh, and he's here, man. You already know. He's ready to hit break it down. And with that being said, let's get right to it, man. You already know. It's your boy Pistol Pete, Dog in the Yard. <laughs> What up, what up, you already know what it is, your boy Pistol Pete, welcome to that dog in the yard, and today you already know we got 10 toes down in the building, what's up, yeah, man, how you yeah, feeling, what up, brother? Bro, what up, Pete? Nice having you, man, what's yeah, up, man, how's everything going? It's a pleasure, going? always, you know how it is, man. So what's up, man, with you, man, you been home nine years. Yeah, yes, sir, going on 10, this is my 10th year right here. 10th year, God bless, man. Yeah. Did 21, and, uh, did 21 years. Did, did, so you did, you're 21 years? Yeah. And you been home going on 10 years now? Yeah. Well, that's a blessing, man. Definitely. Um, where you from? Harlem. Okay. Yeah. Where in Harlem? Sugar Hill. Sugar Hill. All yeah. right, cool. Um, so talk to me, man. Let me know a little bit about your background and shit like that. You know, like we, we you know, I know you from Harlem, but as far as your siblings, you know, your upbringing and shit like that, you you had your moms, your dad involved. Nah, I had my moms, but my pops, he was he was like a he was in the army. You know, most of my family was in the service, and uh, you know, pops was in the street hustling, doing his thing. But I had a stepfather who was also in the service, and that's mm-hmm. where like the militancy and everything come from. But uh, my mom's is like a my mom's is a famous singer. She's the one who started like doo-wop singing for women. She's the first female doo-wop singer. Yeah. She did movies from Raging Bull, Colors. They just oh, that's had it super in the dope, man. Her soundtrack is on there. Wow. Like so, coming up, my mom was always with the big star before Diana Ross, Patti LaBelle, and all. Mm. My mom's been singing from back in the day. She's wow, that's real dope. big, like. Overseas, so coming up, you know, regular thing in the hood. Uh, yeah. You know, got a peer pressures, positive and negative. Yeah, of course. The different temptations, dudes on the block getting money. Mm-hmm. You see that, you know, you want instant gratification. Right. You know, I took to the streets, started mm-hmm. hustling at a young age. You got brothers and sisters? Siblings? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm the youngest of six. Okay. Um, How was that? Sister. You know, I mean, your mom's, you know, raising all six of y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was different because my three brothers and sisters, uh, the the three oldest, they pops was there. Mm. He was always coming around. Me, my brother, and my sister, I, we got the same father. So okay. he was the one that really wasn't around. So it was different. You know, he still paid uh, attention to us, my, my older sister right. brothers. Mm-hmm. They father still showed love, came by, you know, gave motherfucker a little money and all that. Yeah. But... You know, my, one of my sisters was in the army. My brother's a uh, nurse. My other brother's in the army. So growing up, I had brothers and sisters. I had the uh, positive influence, you know, but I chose to go to the streets. Yeah, yeah. So what yeah. Uh, what age you start getting yourself in, in jams and stuff? Uh, in trouble? I first was getting in trouble, like, between 12 and 13 years old. Yeah. You know, we had a dude around my way. He used to hustle, and uh, I found some crack back in the days when crack started, you know, when crack came out. Mm. And I took it to my older sister boyfriend, and he basically showed me how to hustle. He showed me how you know how much a bottle was. This what year was this? Shit, this is the fucking early eighties mm. or mid eighties, eighty four, mm. eighty five around there somewhere. So you taught he was teaching you how to how to how to how to how to, how to, yeah, how to yeah, maneuver. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. the, the the pack I found I had like about three hundred bottles in there, mm. and I didn't know what it was though. So then he was showing me what it was, took him out the bottle, yeah, this is crack, yeah, this is how you weigh it. He was showing me he got a scale. Then I went, matter of fact, I went to uh, 45th. I was hustling down in front of Rich Porter's spot, one of Mm -hmm. his spots he had, and um, dude ran me up out of there. They got word it's a little young motherfucker out here trying to hustle in front of the building, (laughs) and they ran me up out of there and shit. And uh, I made my first $1,500. I was like, damn, this is it. So for a young kid, a young teenager, Hell 13 yeah. years old, just turning like 13. Especially back in the day, 1500 was... Hell yeah, that was a lot of money. I was rich. Hell yeah. What? So, you know, then I just kept trying to do it over, you know, flipping it. 
And then from then, you know, I started getting all other crimes. Because at the same time, I'm going from there. I'm in Brooklyn. So you, you know, know where the Brooklyn, Yeah, you know the Brooklyn side. That's the, they there about robberies and stick-ups and shit. Mm-hmm. So that's where I learned about robberies, stick-ups, sipping okay. tokens, hitting pockets. Okay. You know. And you was about like 12 years old, 13. 13, 12 years old, yeah. Okay. And so when is the first time you went to jail? First time I ever really like just went to jail and then experienced it was uh Well, you went to jail before that then? Yeah, but I ain't do no time. Like, you know how you just okay, go yeah. through and come out. You know, I got yeah. caught with some weed. Okay. I went okay. in and just came right out. It was a nothing. But the oh. first time I ever went to jail, jail for a serious crime was uh I got locked up in Indiana for conspiracy. Mm. So I was in uh Marion Youth Council. I still was young, I still was a teenager. Okay. So I was in Marion Youth Council, uh uh Marion Youth uh, Facility and in Maryland. No, in Indiana. Oh, Indiana. It's called Marion. The same joint where Mike Tyson was at? Oh yeah. I was in the joint across the street. It's the youth joint. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. He was was he with Gosha or something? Who? Tyson. He was in who? What Gosha? He was wait where Tyson was at? <clears throat> He was in Marion. He was in Indianapolis. He was there. He was there too. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. So I was, I was, I was in Indiana for a minute, hustling, and then when I came out, that's when I came here and wound up catching a big case. You wound up going back to New York. Yeah, I came back to New York. Yeah. Okay. And then when I came back to New York, um, but still, in, in between those times, I'm still doing crime. I'm still doing shit. I done stabbed a dude like 15 times in the street. You know, I shot a motherfucker. And, uh, you know, like on my channel, I really don't like speak about like that shit because mm-hmm. I look at it like a glorification. Yeah, yeah, and of course. kids take it like that. So I yeah. really don't talk about that. I try to like yeah. let them we see We can them. do that here because we're not going to glorify it. Yeah, yeah. We're just, yeah. We just bringing it out. That's all. But ain't, you know what I mean? We ain't glorifying none of that shit. Yeah, yeah, definitely, bro. So and then you 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 actually, so you was moving around doing all kind of activities and shit like that. Everything. I was into everything. At anything. 13. At 13, 14, from 13 all the way up. I was in everything. Okay, so when 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 you hit the big, big house, when you when you when you went to jail, like Oh, that was in uh 91. I okay. had a murder. Had a murder, gun possession, uh Where was that at? In Harlem. In Harlem? Yeah. Okay, how was that? I mean, shit, how old you was then? Uh 18, going on 19. Okay, so that means you went to Rikers Island. Yeah, I went to Rikers Island. You know the, the Rikers I mean, Island o- shit. over the bridge and all that. I yeah. mean, what was that experience like? That shit was crazy, bro. You had to be, uh, you had to wear this mask because here you are, you claiming to be one thing, but you always hear the stories about Rikers Island and how it is, how you got to hold your own and this and that. So now when you go in there, you got to be extra tough because in the streets, you know, you could, you could find a, a tough guy. Every 20 guys, you find one. But in jail, Everybody tough. Everybody a killer. Mm-hmm. So now when you come in there, you know, it's a doggy dog world. The name of the show, Dog in the Yard. Yeah. It's a whole bunch of dogs in the yard. So Facts. when I got to Rikers Island, um, you know, the first thing from, but just going back, you know how the OGs be coming home from jail. Mm-hmm. And they be telling you about phone time. When you go in there, you got to get your phone time. It was prepping you. Said, you heard yeah, all these yeah, stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You the stories when you're younger. So when I finally went in there, I'm like, all right. I got to get some phone time. So, you know, you go in the house, you ask for some phone time. So that's your first, as soon as you got there, where you, where, where you uh, what building you was in? I was in C-74. Okay. Yeah. From C-74, I went to North Facility. Then they sent me to Brooklyn House, uh, the Tombs, BCF. Yeah. I was everywhere. So I was that like a island experience, that four building experience, you know, first date and all that. Yeah, that shit was crazy, man. Um... The, the whole cell experience was crazy because that first lock-in night is, is just you and them four walls. You know what I'm saying? You just got time to think and reflect. You know what I'm saying? But at that time, my mindset was like, fuck it. I got to be an animal. When these doors open in the morning, because I didn't go in there until like late. Mm. They brought me in kind of like late, so it wasn't too many people out. So that I get morning you. when I came out, now everybody on the gallery. Doing everybody walk, outside. Yeah, everybody out. You know what I'm saying? Then you're seeing people that you knew. Mm. And like I said, I was between Harlem and Brooklyn, and I used to be in the BX. Mm. So I'm seeing mad dudes I know, boom. So I go for the phone, like, yo, I need some full time. You know, dudes start telling me, like, nah, that's this due time, this due time, whatever, whatever. Like, I'm like, so yo, how I go, nigga? What I got to do to get some time? They're like, mm-hmm. but what time you want? I want eight to nine. They're like, well, that's prime time, nigga. Fish and Nings got prime time. He got prime time. He, and if you want it, nigga, you got to step to him. Mm. You know, so dudes tell me, yo, boom, this is how it go. And that's how you learn the ropes. 
know yeah. what I'm saying? After you get in there. Yeah. How long you was on the island for? Uh, three years. So you was you was in there for what? For a body? Yeah. And, and a gun possession. I didn't I didn't possess it. I had four guns, four gun possessions, and a murder. Okay. Yeah. And what was that outcome? Uh, I wound up getting 15 years. Oh, so you copped out to it? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that was it. 15 years. Yeah, 15 years. Going up top. Going up top. You was what, 18, 19? No, nah, when I went up, I was uh, like 21, 22. Okay. Yeah. Okay, how was that? Where yeah, you, you went at? Downstate? Yeah, downstate. So you know the whole experience from Rikers Island to... Break that shit down, state. man. For those of the brothers that don't know, all them brothers out there that don't know yeah, that vibe. Yeah, from, 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 from Rikers Island to downstate to upstate, that's a totally different experience. When you come from Rikers Island, you're mm -hmm. dealing with mostly like the minority side. You got black and Latinos who's, who's guarding the COs. And uh, it's a different environment because, you know, you're dealing with your own. But when you get up there with them crackers, with the white boys, they let you know, nigga, we'll kill you up in here. Mm. You could cut each other, you could do whatever you're gonna do with each other, but when you come up in here, you touch one of the vowels, we'll kill you up in this motherfucker. Hmm. So when I got to downstate, that whole experience was crazy. You know, getting off the bus, they're taking your property, you know you still got your regular clothes on, mm -hmm. and then they call you out the cell, they strip you right there in front of that table, you take everything off, and then they put you in the shower, spray you with that fucking bug juice, or, or give you the uh, ointment for the uh, lights and all that put it in your head, and then, like in the streets. How you felt, man, with the, I mean, going I through that process? I felt like an animal going through that fucking process. That shit was crazy, man. I felt like, like, I was dehumanized. They was dehumanizing me. I was like, yo, I felt like a slave on a ship. Yeah, no You know bullshit. what I'm saying? I'm standing up there. I never, I, I know what it's like to uh, get stripped and all that, but to be in downstate and standing up there, you got inmates behind you, dudes in the cell, people walking back and forth, mm -hmm. and, and now they like, I right, take off everything. And you know, you just strip down to your drawers. They're like, nah, take them shits off. Strip everything. Give me everything. Take this, boom, go on the And they ask, they, they wait till you strip, then they ask you the questions. Yeah. Opposed to standing there dressed and ask you, yo, boom, this is what you got, this so, strip naked. So that means they ask you all the questions while you sitting there bugging naked. Yeah, while you're there naked. Now you want to ask me questions, you know? So uh, mm. from there, you go in the shower. When you in the streets, you usually go to the barbershop, then you go take a shower. And then they put you in the shower. Then you go to the barbershop. Mm. Then you go from the shower to the chair. So now the hair's wet. It's sticking on you. Shit getting all on you. Like the shit is crazy and everything. It ain't like they're giving you a nice cut. Yeah. They're just balling your shit. Yeah, they just straight yeah. dissing you. And then they give you your clothing and, and, and your little setup. Your fucking number. They give you a number. So then from then, I, I knew it was real from then. When I got that number, I had a number. In, in, in Rikers Island. But when I got that number, they stamped that shit on your clothes. That yeah. number's on you. It ain't Rikers Island. You got an ID card. Right. Upstate, you got a number stamped on you like cattle. On every clothes. Yeah. Then they give you a rule book. Mm. And then within that rule book, it's the rules and regulations on what you can do, what you can't do. You know what I'm saying? So now you went not only in another world, two times. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you got... Every gangster, tough guy, I don't give a fuck who the fuck you are. When you go through there, you're going to adhere to what's being told to you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? No matter who it is, everybody got to go through it. And that's why I say to a lot of people out there today that got different channels, that been through the system, mm -hmm. I want them to give the real. I don't want them to be giving that bullshit that nah, no yeah, I was holding shit. it down. I was doing. You wasn't holding it down. You was locking in when the police said locked in. Facts. When he said strip, when you went to the visit, strip, turn around, open your ass up, and you open it up, turn around again. I ain't do it again. You you did it again. That's right. And Tell him about that. That's stuff. right. And you're gonna do that, bitch. Yeah, you're gonna do it again. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And I and, and, and I subject myself. I don't blame nobody else. I subject myself to that 21 years of doing that shit. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Of course. You was the one responsible for your own shit, of course. You That's have to right deal with that. But a lot of dudes front, though, and they act like they ain't go through that shit downstate and all that. So it's yeah. good that you enlighten them and talking about it because downstate is not easy and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? These dudes be acting like, yeah, I did that. Or some... Nah, downstate, you wasn't, came, you wasn't front at all. Yeah, you shut the fuck up when the police came. Yeah, it's a whole that different was a whole vibe. New world for you. And then from downstate, I went to Sing Sing. So now I went from downstate going to Sing Sing, you know, we call it swing swing. Yeah. When I got the sing sing, that shit was like being in the streets. You get anything up in there. Mm. I'm running around. I'm just like like a chicken with my head cut off. So 
Sing Sing was what yeah, everybody said. I could do this sweet. right here. Yeah, yeah, I could do this. You know what I'm saying? Facts. And then they hit me in the head again. From Sing Sing, they sent me to Elmira. Well, they said, why? They trying for you for what reason? On Sing Sing, I was only there for uh, transportation. Okay, okay. So you wasn't so there long. I stayed long. there for like nine months. I got and you. And from there, they packed me up, sent me to the L. When I got to the L, it was another shock. Because you know how them crackers up in the Elmira, man. It was different in Elmira. Everything is- It worse than fucking downstate, man. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Elmira was crazy, man. Shit, man. As soon as you get there, you really feel that. You feel the, you feel the pressure. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? They really on that. That's our house kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. They they show you it's their house, and you you know it's their house. And that's another thing with us mm-hmm. as inmates and and, and ex convicts. We we was in an environment where we knew that we knew we had a common enemy, mm-hmm. but we chose to look at each other as enemies. When we all under the same banner, we Fact. all up in here doing time, we all fucked up, but then we still want to, you know, oppress each other. Hurt each other and shit like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's why when I, truth, I, was, I was banging at one time, I used to be blood, and um, that's what really made me get away from that because I seen nothing in it. I wasn't getting no money out of it. Dudes wasn't trying to get no money out of it. And I was, everything about me was always about, I'm trying to get a dollar. I'm trying to get some money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that cause, it, was, it wasn't a cause. It wasn't a cause. And, you know what? It's man, so crazy man. that you say that. you probably the, probably one of the few that came up here on this uh, on my show and um, and kept it 100 in regards to being down with a gang and not getting nothing out of it. Because, you know, I have all my homies, they, you know, they have a bunch of them bloods, crips. You know what I mean? I don't care. what Whatever belief you want. You can call me tomorrow and be like, your pistol, call me Superman. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? All right, but well, that's your name tomorrow, Superman. Yeah, you know yeah. the vibe in New York. They, yeah, yeah. they give your nickname early. So, um, and to see, to see, you know, like, like, I only seen the only time I ever seen uh uh like bloods and like kings and I, I seen a lot of them brothers get hurting each other, you know what I'm saying? I never seen like I never really seen no no prosper, you know what I'm saying? Like they even if they, they do good for a little bit. It still turns into shit later on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, if yep. say we we might be cool for a year or so, and by the end of the year, I done cut you. You know what I'm saying. You done cut me. Yeah, yeah. Something happened where I don't know the I don't know the rules or not like that. You know what I'm saying. I don't know how how it actually goes, but I know for a fact that they be banging each other out, man. Like I'm, mean, I don't care, and that don't that don't go just for like I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna point out say bloods. That goes for every, every gang yeah, shit. Every gang. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, Lion Kings, I, I seen the craziest shit. They be doing it to each other. Yeah. Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, Definitely. So I used to, I, you know, that, you know, as a young brother, it always kept me like, why would I be down with something? You know what I'm saying? When they're the first one to crack my head later on and shit and bust me open and all that. So, you know what I mean? Why would I have that pressure on me and all that when I could just fuck it, just ride by myself? I ain't got to worry about all that. Yeah, that's feel me. Yeah, I was, I was, I was. Oh, the judge put it in my record for when I went to the parole board that I was a manipulator, and I manipulate mm. the system. Mm. So when I was homie, I was, I knew I was a manipulator, but I was denying all of my bad qualities. But I knew how to manipulate, mm. and I, and every jail that I was in, I was always like the big homie there telling these little young dudes, and this is when it wasn't hardly no bloods at all. Yeah, yeah. And I used to tell them like, yo, listen, man, we got the people in fear already. They're already scared of us. They know we wild, we cutting and doing a bunch of dumb shit. All right, now it's time for us to start going for niggas that's getting the bag. Mm-hmm. We got to start pushing up. We got to control the whole job. They didn't see my vision. Nah. My vision was like, if we're going to do something, we're going to do something and get it out and get something out of it, opposed to, as you probably seen, a lot of motherfuckers that was banging on different gangs, they either was motherfucking smoking weed or ditto, getting high into a bunch it of bullshit, couldn't shit, pay man. the tab, they pink slips is bouncing. You know a, lot of gang, a lot of motherfucking gangs and shit, different gangs and shit, they allow you to fuck with homos and all yeah, kinds of crazy yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, so yeah. you know, yeah, so you don't really see no ain't no prosper, they ain't nothing. I mean, they, I ain't they really Black say- Panthers and nothing. They militant. They doing the right thing, standing up for a real cause. At least they going against the motherfucking, you know, the devils that want the oppressors and all that. You know, that's a whole different vibe. But for us to be cutting each other to meet down with a certain group and all that, and then be yeah. all of a sudden we either we fall out two days later, three days later, you cut me or same people we break bread and shit. 
cut each other. Oh, like yeah. I just never seen. That's just like yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just really crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I never really I actually like, and that's crazy to be talking about that because we we never really talked about that shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Nah, we never talked about how brothers be cutting each other and all that. We down with gangs and it it, some, it, it just don't make no sense to me, man. I ain't go lie to you. To me, I ain't down with shit. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Because yeah. I ain't gonna report myself to nobody. I don't feel like reporting myself. And that's what happened to and me. And I don't bro. feel like for acting like I got a. Break, break a rule or something like that and get recommended or something like that. I just ain't, I, I'm just not, you know what I'm saying? So when when, when you decided you want to, you know, change that, you know, like you, that, that that came to your mind, like you was like, you know what, man, fuck all, I ain't, I ain't doing I this mean, no more. When, I Where mean, I've been, I've been, I've been more than fuck when, when I left, I was in Sullivan. Okay. So I was always, something always was there in my mind, like, nigga, you a leader. What the fuck is you doing with people that's just a bunch of fucking followers and then these dudes that want to be chiefs? don't have no sense of direction. Mm. So I remember one time when it was like they sent the word down like, yo, uh, uh, one of the homies got hit up in Attica, beat up by the police. Mm. And like, yo, we're going to hit the police. Everybody going to hit the police at this time or whatever, whatever. And I said, who going to hit the police? You motherfuckers go ahead. Who the fuck I look like? You giving me an order to go hit a police. Get the fuck out. You go hit them, nigga. Fuck I look like. Mm. But my whole change came when I went on a visit one time and my son came to see me, and uh, we, you know, I take the pictures and take time to develop. And while I was developing, I'm looking at it, and he in the picture, like this with the Latin King sign. I'm like, "What the fuck is you doing? What is this?" He's like, "Nah, I'm a Latin King." I'm like, "When you became a Latin King, who the fuck said that?" He said, "My uncle Latin King." You know, he said, "I'm a king," and he started telling me, "Shut up!" Boom. So I start going in on him. Yeah, that shit, crying. Your, that shit blew your whole blew my mind. whole fuck everything, your whole, your whole bro. Visit, you was just Whoa. like, what? Word, man. And, and, and one thing, dudes, that's home now, that been in prison, they never talk about the times when they was crying in their motherfucking cell, nigga. I went back to my cell and I was crying like, damn. Yeah, that's fucking son, son that is out hurt. there growing up a Latin king. That's why I said, how can I teach him anything? And I'm still up in here doing a bunch of gang dumb shit. Yeah, you in that gang bang. Yeah, yeah I'm in so. gang bang. I said, nah, that's it. I'm done with this shit. I can't teach my son not to do this, and I'm still doing it. You know what I'm saying? So that was the last straw. But so how you went about it, though? I mean, was it any 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 consequences? Nah, it? nothing. I just sent word like, yo, listen. One of the dudes that came to the jail, he was like, yo, this and that. I'm like, yo, let the niggas know I retired. He like, what you mean you retired? I retired, dropped my flag, whatever the fuck you want to call it, nigga. That's it. And he like, yo, you know, going to be repercussions? All right, whatever. Then niggas bring it. I'm not worrying about that, nigga. This is my life. I make the choices what I make with my life. Mm -hmm. If niggas want to bring it, we could die. I don't care. I'm ready to die. Let's get it. And you stand. And you stand. You stand, I stand for what my you ground. Yeah, then you they came out next day like, "Yo, nah, everything good." The homie sent word, "You good?" I don't give a fuck if they said I wasn't good. I ain't, I ain't trying to be the toughest thing in the world. Your mind was it. already set. Yeah, you done. It. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm done with this. That's it, man. Or whatever come after it. So now, I mean, I knew you was. It was. It was any attention. I mean, the next. I mean, doing that. Now nah, you know because jail. at the time, you know, <laughs> you got. Just imagine doing that, right? But then you got other dudes that's under you, that's with you, and now mm. they gonna be like, hey, yo, what's up, nigga? That's some bitch ass shit. Yo, how you just going, you know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, get the fuck out. Y'all need somebody to help train y'all to direct y'all or something, nigga? Mm. I'm not with it. Nigga, I got a family to go home. And my homies was always on me like, yo, homie, what you doing with that? Nigga, you about getting money. Nigga, we from Harlem. We getting money. We, we, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you up in some gang shit. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah, they're on a the different vibe. Man. They're like, they're looking at you like, yeah, what the fuck you doing? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's not even yeah. style, nigga. You lay back, fly, get money, you know what I'm saying? So you, so you 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 retired, you retired, you retired that whole yeah, that whole everything. vibe. And um, where, where was that at? Did you decide to do that? That one? was in Sullivan. Sullivan. Yeah. Okay. Then I started getting with the uh, youth awareness program, the CAP program, started talking to the kids and all that. Okay, so you turn me. you turn around and turn that whole negative shit to something positive. Hell yeah, hell yeah, yeah. That then was, I started. So then you started wanted, programming and all that. Yeah, I started programming. And, and when I say programming, not the facility programming, but just pro programming within myself. Yeah, of course. Teaching myself. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Started learning about my crime, about... Uh, 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 why I did what I did, how I became a criminal, how I was able to kill a person, take a person's life and feel nothing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I was able to look at my own fellow brother mm. and see him as not even a human being. How I was able to de dehumanize him. You know what mm. I'm saying? How I became so detached and desensitized and wanted that instant gratification and poor impulse control. I started reading and learning about myself and from then... I ended up, uh, you know, I'm going from different jail to jail to jail. And then they came out with a program 
and I entered to the Why you was getting not to cut you, but why you was getting trapped? What you mean? You, you, you know, from, from Sullivan, you know, classification drop. Okay. I want I want so to go to Woodburn. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Went to a medium. Then from there, I went to Otisville. Then from Otisville, I wound up going back to Sing Sing. Mm. Because when I was in Otisville, the counselor said, uh, this is your terminal facility. I'm like, what you mean terminal facility? Like, this is your facility. You could die here. I said, who could die here? He's like, you could die here. I said, what? I'm not dying nowhere. So I started bugging the fuck out in the counselor office. I'm like, I'm not dying nowhere. And she's trying to push it to me like, you can die in here. And I'm like, I'm not dying in here. I kill a motherfucker before I die. And that's when they pulled the pen. And they all ran up in there and shit. So when they see me, the police, you know, you know the sergeants and all that. When they see me, they're like, yo, just put your hands behind your back. From there, they sent me to Sing Sing, put me in the box. Observation cell put me in the box. So you, how long you last in the medium? Shit, you ain't last? No, 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 because I went there for a minute. Then they brought me back mm. to Otisville. Okay. And then they sent me out again. They sent me to Woodburn. Okay. Then from Woodburn, I went to the box again. Went mm. to the 200 box. To, okay. Uh, Collins box. Okay. Then from there, went to Franklin, Bear Hill, and then I went to Clinton. And then from Clinton. So you went back to me, back to Max. Yeah, but but Clinton, I went to the uh, Merle Cooper program. Okay. Where the Merle Cooper program used to be a program for for rapists and pedophiles and shit. Okay. But they switched it and they opened it up for everybody. Mm. If you got a murder, if you got whatever, but if you come there with a heinous crime, crazy crime, you got to say everything you did and any crime you ever did, just like this whole interview. Yeah. But the only thing, you got to sit amongst over 250 inmates and say your crime. You got to give them the dirt. And the psychologist, psychiatrist, they got your whole case and everything right there. So I ended up becoming a counselor there. Wow. And, and, and the psychiatrist, psychologist was like, yo, I already, oh, mind you that, I already went to uh, five parole boards, kept getting hit. Okay, so you was go so you went you went you went five times to the parole. They get you two years, two years, two years, two years, two every fucking time, two years. So and I, and I was getting reversals, I was getting de novo hearings, you know what I'm saying? So that's how I was able to go five times within a six year span. Mm. And I made my sixth board in Clinton, but while in Clinton, that's where I really learned the most. As far and your bed, what you what you had? What, what was your bed? I had 15. 15, 15 life. life. Yeah. Yeah, so they just keep hitting you. Kept hitting you. You ain't got no CR, none of that. No CR, no nothing. Yeah, because you, you got life. Shit is crazy. And that's why that counselor was telling me, like, yo, you that's could never go home. That's what she was telling home. you. Yeah, she told me you could never go home. You could die in here. I ain't trying to hear that you wasn't, But you wasn't even thinking that far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't thinking that but far at all. You thought about that shit later. Like, I think yeah. he hit a couple times with the boy. You was like. I started thinking, like, said, I ain't never right. You keep a motherfucker here for life. Word, bro. I got homies that's in there now, like, you know, that just keep getting hit, hit, hit. They, they go there with 15 of life, 10 of life. They've been in there for 30 years, 35 years. Yeah, they keep you know hitting them. Yeah. I got little homies because I still go to the jails now to this right. day. I go see my homies, go see my friends and shit. And uh, they keep getting hit at the ball, mm. you know? And uh, for kids out there, they think it's a game. You can spend the rest of your life in jail of off of a five to life bed. That's off a fact. Of a, Nine of life big. Facts. Like juveniles, when they go in, the max they could get is nine of life. And they be ending up doing 25, 30 years off of nine to life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially if they don't know any better. They, so, you know, the most, a lot of kids is either not educated enough, you know what I'm saying? They're running yeah. around the street and all that. They catch these bears and all that. They get, they get caught up in them. They don't, they don't even realize that shit. Yeah. They realize that shit later. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? When, just, when like when, in it. just like when you realized yeah, this shit later. Like when I re- yeah, that's right. You know what I'm right. saying? They might be t- trying to tell you that shit now, and you ain't, you ain't peeking that shit because your mind is on a whole different vibe. Yeah. But once you get into the to that bed and you trying to get home, you already know. That's when you know it's real. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. You know, because it's easy to go to jail, but it's so hard to come out. Hard to get out, bro. You know what I'm saying? We go, oh, we all, we talk, hey, everybody talk about, it's easy to go to jail, man. But it's fucking hard as fuck. I mean, to me, it was hard as fuck to get out of jail. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was like, yeah, what bro. the fuck, man? Like, damn. You know? And that was the hardest part. Getting yeah. the fuck out. Getting the fuck out. Even, well, even when you decide you want to do the right thing. Because it wasn't like you was an angel the whole time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they see the ugliness of you when you're trying to change and do the right thing. Facts. Well, they still throw that shit in your face. Shit don't 100%. matter. 100%. And every time I used to go to parole board, I never understood why the fuck they keep hitting me. And what it was was when I was going in the parole board, I never fully understood my crime and what I did. Right. You know what I'm saying? 
So when I go in there, they be like, yo, why you had a gun? I'm going to have a gun for protection. Like, your, your mother had a gun too? No, nah, she ain't had no gun. So why you needed a gun? Did you live with your moms? Oh, your brother had a gun? He didn't need a gun, right? Mm. Boom. So they started breaking my shit down. It wasn't yeah. until I fully started to understand. My last boy, when I went, they was like, yo, uh, so tell us why you had that gun. I said I had a gun because I wanted to kill somebody. I had a gun because a gun gave me power. Without it, I was a coward. I would fight anybody. I thought I was a tough guy. Mm. But with a gun, I could hit you from across the street. Yeah. With a gun, I had a wish a nigga would attitude. Mm. I wish a nigga would say something. I wish a nigga would step on my foot, bump me, anything. I'm going to pop him. Mm. That's why I had that gun. Mm. It was like, oh, okay. So then why were you able to take a person's life? And then I broke it down. I was dehumanized. I was desensitized. I had poor impulse control. I didn't care. I had a problem with a guy one time. He pulled the gun, shot a gun at me. I wound up catching him and shot him. Mm. And that's not the first time I ever did a crime. That's not the first time I ever shot nobody. I had crimes where I got away before. And I was just being vulnerable and open to them. And they was like, oh, okay, all right. And I said, in my sentence of minutes, you can see I copped out to all known and unknown crimes, murders, shootings, everything. Mm. So he was like, all right, all right, all right, right. Well, you ain't got to say no more. You know what I'm saying? Then from then, I wound up making a parole board. And right after I made the parole board, what year was motherfuckers that? tried me, 2012. <sighs> motherfuckers tried me. I got back to the block. You know what I'm saying? You know how you always got one that, of them. That's just when it, when you about to go home, <laughs> yeah. for some reason, all kind of shit start <laughs> yeah, coming. It just you. start happening, right? Man. Motherfuckers, motherfuckers that never even violated or even, never even settled, looked set, at me like what? All of a sudden, they bumping I'll crush you. you. Yeah, now you like what? What you said? Come in the bathroom, nigga. Yeah. I was like, what? I said, oh, and you start shit. getting all ten stuff too because yeah. you know you 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 feeling it. You you know you like I gotta get out of here. So. Well, shit is weird, right? I was ready, but then I thought about it like, hell, and he's still in there. Look at that shit. The same dude who was doing that, I checked this shit up, I'm like, damn, he's still up in there. Look at that shit. Word. So you got off the parole, you knew you was going home, or you or you was still like, how you No, fuck? I knew I was going home. I knew I got my paper right. I'm about to say I mean, but when they, when, once you was there, after you breaking that shit down to them, how you felt? You Did you feel the feeling that you Yo, was going to go? Yeah, 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 yeah. Before I went into the parole board, I was telling my man and, and, and my man Sab, I'm like, I'm out of here. He's like, what you mean, my brother? Sad. I'm out of here, bro. I don't know what y'all talking about. I'm going home. I'm like, but nah, you can't think like that. You already got hit. I don't care what y'all telling me. I figured this shit out. And then I went, boom, and did it. And got it. Yeah. And made it. I'm like, I figured it out. I already know what the fuck my problem was and what Absolutely. I was saying and what I was not saying. And then after they just I wanted you it, to you know, be real and, and tell her the truth. And that's the thing about it with the parole board. I mm-hmm. got a homie that's sitting in now. He don't want to be real. You know, some people, I know brothers in there that, that went to jail and they never did the crime, so they feel a certain way. They yeah. go up there and they be like, I didn't Yo, do it. I, I ain't do it. And the parole officer be like, the parole board be like, You got found well, guilty uh, by you got found your guilty guilty by the by the You already know you was yeah. on trial, you got found guilty. You can't come in here talking about that you you ain't do it or a different story. Yeah. And they keep then that's how you get hit. Keep getting hit. My, but my man just came home, he did 30 years. And uh, he went in there. He went in as a juvenile. He home now. He yeah, went in and said he man. didn't do it. He said, I ain't do it. You know what I'm saying? And he in the Innocent Shh. Project and after all that three, shit. After three years, after 30 years, they had to let his ass go. Yeah, no, he made his first board. Look at that shit, man. God bless him, I bro. said, damn, man. You made the first. Word. Some dudes just got all the luck, man. Yeah, yeah, bro. I'm like, that damn. That's some crazy shit, right? Word, yeah. Some you dudes be having the that fucking luck. luck. I don't know how the fuck, man. These niggas, I would be like, what the, how the fuck he got all that luck, man? Word, bro. I, that's, it happens like that, man. But that's good, man. At least he home now. God bless, man. Yeah, definitely. So man. you came home in 2012. Yeah. And uh, um, tell me about anything you seen before you came home that you can never forget. You know, what I mean, and, and as far as you, when while you bit it, what are the things that you that you experienced or seen that you'll never forget? I mean, pfft, and I, I know it's plenty. Or well, give us, give us, give us one. My one, own personal experience with any, me. any, whether it's I mean, yourself my, or my, something that you seen, whether somebody getting banged out, raped, you know, anything that you have in mind that you would, that you could share, you'd be like, you know what, I remember this right here. And I oh never yeah, yeah, I remember this. I was in Auburn. I seen a brother um get banged out over some dope. Dominican dude killed this white boy. Uh, they was going head up in the yard. They started fighting, but the, the Dominican dude had the ice pick, mm. and the white boy knew like a little martial arts. Mm. And once they started popping up, we was all going in. It was about like eight block. We all going in. Once they popped off, everybody made like a big circle. Police in the circle, everything. The police is up on the roof. He got the gun and everything. And, and he's moving his hand, but you can't really see the gun. 
in his hand because he moving it around. Mm. And every time the, the white boy would hit him, kick him, boom, boom, punch him, he'd hit him, boom. He'd keep going, he'd hit him, boom, boom. And once the police was about to let off, they stopped fighting. Once they took the Dominican dude, they was about to take him in the block, and then the white boy fell out. Oh, like, shit. what the fuck? Boom. Lift his shirt up, start seeing the blood coming out, all the little holes in him. They was like, oh no, take him the other way, take him to the box. Wow. I'm like, damn, he was poking this motherfucker. And nigga didn't even know. But his adrenaline, the white boy, his adrenaline yeah, was going so much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. It wasn't until after, that's when he calmed down. He died right there. Boom, they rushed him out. I'm like, damn. And it was just another day. Yeah, that you know was saying? day. Went back in the block. Everybody moved on with the, with the mess hall. Yeah. With the you know regular gym we schedule. We talked about it that night on the gate, the next morning, that's it. Who, who going to get murdered tomorrow? Who going to get murdered the next day? You mm. know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's crazy. The, the ugliness of prison, man, it's, it's, it's so simple because it could be a dead body there. You walk over and you act like you don't even see it. Like, I don't even, I ain't got, because it ain't, everything in prison is not, none of your business. Absolutely. Whatever's going on. Whatever's going on. Yeah. It's and the ugliness of me, I was a, I was a, a bus when I went to the box and all that other shit. Mm -hmm. I don't put shit in my mouth, spit shit on. <laughs> like, I was a disgusting motherfucker. So that nasty ugliness side of me, I'm like, damn, I will never forget that side. Like, damn, I was a fucking animal. Yeah. You got to lower yourself to become a fucking animal. Crazy, huh? Yeah, man, that shit is crazy. People, but <laughs> a lot of people, people hear, they, they, they hear that story, they be like, shit. Yeah. I didn't know you was like that. You know That's what I'm saying? Like my this, this, when I went on a visit, I'm on a visit and shit, and she like, what the fuck is that on your, on your teeth? I'm like, what? She's like, it was shit. Mm. And she's like, what the fuck? Because... The police, I remember the boss chairs, mm -hmm. you got to sit down, the metal detective joints. When you okay. sit down, you can ring if you got something up in you. Yeah. So I had a razor in me, and I kept ringing. Mm. So they put me in the observation room. So you know they feed you whatever for you could so you shit. Could flush it out. Yeah. So they kept coming in with the little joint and watching me while I shit, and then they go through your shit with their gloves on. So what I used to do is I used to I ask them so for Do they put shit. you on that chair when you like getting transferred to the new jail? Yeah, so I was going to court. Okay. I went down for family court, and when I was coming back through downstate, mm. my shit was ringing. So I kept ringing, like, why you keep ringing? I'm like, oh, now I got a bullet in my back. They're like, well, your back ain't ringing, your ass is ringing. I guess maybe from what I ate and the burner didn't go all the way up in me, so it was right there, whatever, but that chair was strong. That shit kept ringing. I'm like, damn. You was like, so he's like, yo, put him in the observation cell. <laughs> they put me in the observation cell. I had to go up in the observation cell when they watched me and they sit right there in the chair and was just looking at me. Seeing what I do. I'm in there, I got a sheet and a mattress on the floor. And that was it. Yeah, I heard about that shit. I never, I never experienced well, that. You never experienced that? No. That shit was crazy. Well, they just put you in a room, the room will have anything in it? An empty room. Like this room, just imagine nothing in here. All I had was a heater. The heaters that go around. No way you can hide nothing, really. Check it. So I'm up in the room, I just got a sheet and I got the mattress. So I'm sitting there in the seal looking at me, and I'm just sitting on the mattress looking at him. And my mind is going, damn, how the fuck are you going to get around this? Because it's going to come up out of me. Yeah. So I lay down, and I got my legs up, and I'm pushing. So I get the razor out, mm. but it's covered in shit. So now I got to take it and put it in my mouth. Mm. So I got it in my mouth, and now I tell the seal, yo, I got to take a shit. So boom, I take a shit. And now I'm thinking, what am I going to do with this shit? Because, you know, in an observation cell, they're going to come to you and search you, open your mouth all over and do all again. that other yeah, shit. Yeah, of course. So I'm laying in the bed. I'm like, yo, seal, I need a blanket, man. It's cold in here. They're like, nah, all you get is that sheet. So I'm like, damn. So I take the razor out, take it out the plastic, take it off the, uh, mm -hmm. the tape, and I put it in my mouth, and I'm under the sheet like this, turn, and I'm trying to break it. And when I bit, bang, it popped, and it cut all my mouth. My teeth in the back is all broke round to this day. Fuck. Broke all my teeth. I'm like, oh, shit. And I'm spitting it out under the joint. It's shit. blood everywhere. Oh, I'm man. I'm like, oh, shit. What the fuck? So now I got my hand balled up. I come up out of the sheet, and I'm looking at the police. The police is sitting there looking at me. So I moved the mattress back, because I told you it's a heater in there. Yeah. So I move the mattress back to the corner of the heater, and I go under the sheet, and I'm touching the heater. And then there, and there was a little slot right there. So I started taking the pieces of my tooth out and all that, and I'm up under there putting the shit up under the covers, 
And you know how you, I'm holding the cover up and I'm looking at the shadow of the officer mm-hmm. to see if they're going to come in. Put it under there and I come up out the joint. They come, come inside the cell. They're like, yo, come on, we're going to take you back down to the chair. They take me down there. And while I'm down there, they in there searching the room. God's my witness, bro. I got back in the chair. I'm not ringing. The police is like, why you not ringing? You just was ringing yesterday. I said, I told you it's a bullet. The bullet be moving around. They're like, nah, get in this cell. So they go in the cell. They don't find nothing. They're like, oh. So I'm like, I'm telling you, like, oh, you want to play crazy? You know what they did with me? They put me in the crazy house. Just because they couldn't find nothing, they knew I had something, they put me in the crazy house in downstate in the bug out unit. Wow. I'm like, why the fuck is y'all put me in here for? They're like, nah, you want to play us? We gonna play. And I was only going through for court. I was only in transit. I was just supposed to go yeah, through and go back to my jail. The motherfuckers kept me in the bug out unit. So while I'm in the bug out unit, the nurse come. I'm like, yo, I'm not crazy. Why they got me here? She's like, nobody crazy. All the crazy dudes. And they like, yeah, we're not crazy. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm really not crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah, whatever. Every day I used to be on the fucking my window, yelling out to everybody that walked past the, the civilians that's walking past, like, yo, please, yo, boom, giving them my people phone number. It was one civilian that motherfucker listened to me. He was like, all right, I'm gonna do it for you. I ain't believe it. A day later, he called me down. I went to the office. He was like, yo, listen, you got two minutes. Get on the phone. Hurry up and call who you could call. He said because he knew. He went and checked to see who I was. He like, you ain't supposed to be in here. Mm. You supposed to be over in Woodburn. Yeah. Called my people, my girl and all that. They called all me and all that. And they wound up coming. Sergeant told me, he said, yo, you better never come through here again. Next time, we're going to fuck you up. You better never come through here. It was tight. They didn't they find nothing. It was tight. They couldn't find nothing. And you freaked it. Word. You put it off. You you you, play, you pulled it off. Yeah, yeah, I pulled it off that time. Yeah, you Word, pulled baby. it off. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, bro. That shit was crazy. So man. from that, from 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 that was a hell of a fucking experience right there. Yeah, man. On some G shit. Um, after that, what happened? You you wound up making a you wound up going home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made the parole board, came home. You know, welcome. And uh, I always had family support. Always had love. Yeah. So how was it? You know, coming home. I mean. 21 years, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, shit, this is a long time, man. 21 years is yeah, 20, 20 fucking years. one years. Yeah, yeah, hell You know, yeah. so that's like half of your life. Yeah, hell yeah. That was more than half of my life because I wasn't even saying. 21 yet when yeah, I went in. Look at that I shit. did more time in jail than I did in the streets. Yeah. And that's why I tell people now, like, I'm not playing catch up, but I'm just still growing. I've been home going on 10 years now, but I'm still just starting to grow. That's just, I've been going for 21. Wrong with that. It's, it's okay. nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with you feeling good. Hell yeah. Treating yourself. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with none of that. Fuck yeah. that shit. You was gone for a long time. Always a you know work in progress, man. You always got to take care of yourself. You know what I'm saying? Especially yeah. and treat yourself. Yeah, you know, because I get the same shit. Damn, Pete, you been home all these years and all that. But, man, I, I treat myself every day, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know got what I'm saying? You, man. Because, you know, the moments of shit, we can never we get those back. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? So we just got to live life. You know what I'm saying? Make the best of it while we are here now. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Bro. So you've been home since 2012. What you been doing since you've been home? Well, when I first came home, you know, I went for a job, was denied and all that based off of my uh, record, criminal history, this and that. And I remember coming home um, after that job. I got it, but then corporate wound up shooting me down. Okay, yeah, you got the job and then corporate caught on and then yeah. he got, he's a felon. Yep. And that's fucked up because that's they really up. technically ain't supposed to fire you and nothing like They're that. They're not. And I never knew when I came home, I had a certificate of relief for disability, mm-hmm. meaning that they cannot use nothing of your past against you. Mm. That's a certificate of release and a certificate of good conduct. I had that when I walked out of Clinton. They gave me that shit. Mm. I'm one of the first dudes that had a murder that got that certificate mm-hmm. coming out the door. Wow. Nobody never got it. Look at I that got shit. that shit. So when I, but I never knew yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, power yeah. in it. Yeah. So when I went for the job, I got it. Boom. I could have used, used that. You could have used that. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't know. I didn't use it. Yeah. But when, they, when I was driving home on the bus, coming from, I was on Roosevelt Island. I thought it was like a fucking fly on my face, and I'm like brushing this shit. I was motherfucking crying. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm self-talking myself like, damn, man, I fucking did all this time, man. I'm ready. I want to work. I want to do the right thing. These motherfuckers deny me. Then I said, man, man up. Man. I said, never again. I don't give a fuck who it is. What deny me? I'm not accepting no. From here, they say no. Over here, they going to say yeah. So I kept pushing. Absolutely. I wound up getting a job. I was working for Arizona Trucking. I was working for mm. Audi of Brooklyn. I was working for, I used to drive a school bus. Um, I got a bunch of jobs. I That's had a thousand up, jobs since I've been That's on Con Edison. 
everything. So and you've been, you been home nine years. Nine years. Wow, that's what's well, up, man. Then I then I grew tired of working for people because I seen the money I was making all of these companies. Right. When I was working for Con Edison, I'm like, they make over fucking twenty billion dollars a year. Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn. I was making good money. I was making three, four thousand every two weeks. But I'm like, damn, man, I need more. That's why I need in that position. I need my own. So then that's when I got into get my LLC and start my own business. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's why I tell young brothers, it's not hard. You just gotta apply yourself. And Facts. you gotta never give up. And that's what happened with me. I came home. People still gonna view us as criminals that we used to be. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You never gonna get that that stigma up off of you. Mm. Do you accept it or you just keep moving? And that's what I did. I just kept moving and uh got my own business going popping and you live you just a living testament that you could the key here is just to never give up. That's right. And believe in yourself. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? A lot of brothers come home, they lost, they ain't got no education, they ain't got no family. Embrace them to when they come home. They don't know how to take the train. I mean, they don't know how to get the fucking ID. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Shit like that. So it's it's complicated for a lot of brothers too, you know what I'm saying? But the key to to it all is just not to give up. That's right. Because if you ain't go, if you never gave up and you did thirty years, twenty years in prison, why well, come home and give up? Because I seen home, that. What what we was getting in prison? You know that, right? You seen that, right? Yeah, brothers yeah. come home and, and yeah. they they be they be in jail and do, they do well while they in jail. Hell yeah, living then you, good. Then you see them in the street and they fucked oh, up. Oh yeah. And you trying to figure this shit out because they, you know, some people just get used to that life. But you know they used to getting taken care of. When That's what I'm saying. They get used to that life. Yeah. Three meals. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. three, you know, you get three meals regardless of what yep. in prison. So you don't get that out here. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You got to fresh for yourself. You got to go out, out there and, you know, do what you got to do for yourself. You know what I'm saying? In order to survive. So a lot of people fail. A lot yeah. of brothers fail. Definitely. A lot of brothers don't do it the way you have done it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or I have done it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of brothers is more weak minded. They didn't have the education or the support. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we trying to get, you know, this, we, 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 we at, we at a stage, at, 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 you know, where, in my show, like <clears throat> we trying to implement, you know, and, and get like a, like a whole new where we could we be able to help brothers come home. You know, we trying to get to we trying to see we could work with other companies and all that shit where we could get to where we could start helping brothers when they come home out of jail. You know what I'm saying? Like say, you know, on on your on your uh, on your day off. You know what I'm saying? I I got my five guys that I could depend on that you could. Take Julio that just came home for 13 years mm-hmm. and take him to the get his license, his driver's You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I want to start doing shit like that where we could stop having my brothers because a lot of brothers is fucked up. They come home, yeah, they don't got nothing, no man. Support or nothing, no support. Man. They don't have no They don't have no clothes. And they don't know how to do it. They and stuck. that's what I said. Yeah, they stuck. And wow. that's what, and I blame the system at the same time because they give them $40 and put them on the bus and tell them, go ahead, fuck on out of here with nothing. Defend, defend for yourself. Mm-hmm. So then I feel, and that's what I do on my channel, on Ten Toes Down. I speak about uh, prison reform and brothers that's coming home and the help. I had started the bus service. I was going to the prisons and doing Look all that. Look at that shit. See? You know what I'm saying? I had a van service. That's and all dope, that. man. So that's dope, man. So I believe man. that same thing you just said. That's yeah. crazy how great minds think yeah. alike. I had the same thought of saying, listen, get a van and for the, all the brothers that's coming home, go pick everybody up. Today is DMV day. We're going to the DMV. Everybody going to go get their uh, ID. Yeah. The next day, okay, this is going to be job day. We take everybody out where everybody got to go get their job. Where you, where you going at? Where you got to interview at? Where you got to interview? And take them and show them the way. You know what I'm saying? That's boom. it. Then get out the van. Take them on the train. Get the metro cars. All right, boom. Then you catch this train. You go over here. Because brothers be lost. And when Super you get lost. that support, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I guarantee you, the recidivism rate will drop. Drastically, Super. because now we got that support. We got brothers who we can identify with. Facts. Because if I came home and I see you, and I'm like, "Damn, he up? How he get up like that?" Oh, I could do it. Long as I need, as long as I get that guidance, especially when I ain't got nothing. I got poor education, and you help guide me, not mm-hmm. just give me nothing. That's why I tell people the best thing you can give me, coming from prison, is a job. Mm-hmm. Give me that education. That's why, like Joel Santana, that's my little man, right? When I came home, I come out. You know, automatically rappers, what they do, they want you to see the the beauty, the thing, the change. They get money. They yeah, rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting the riches, up. The riches, the Yeah, they rich. So I'm up in the Phantom. I'm like, oh, this thing is nice. This thing is really. He asked, what's up? What you want? I'm like, I don't want nothing. I don't want no money. I don't want nothing. I want a job. He's like, a job? What kind of job? I said, the best job you could give me, a security job. So when I came home, I was like 2.30. I 
crazy brolic. Mm. I already know. And me with the gift of gab and mm-hmm. how to talk. All you got to do is give me a job in security. You're going to maneuver. And from there, I'm going to push it. I could work. I could get my, I could get my own from there. I need a job. I don't need no, you give me three, four, five thousand, twenty, thirty thousand. That's nothing. Opposed to constant flow of money. I got a family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I believe that's what's the, another problem with brothers that's coming home from prison. That dudes look out opposed to having jobs ready. And I, on my channel, I gave out over 100 jobs. You know, a lot of brothers, man, a lot of brothers come home, they have a whole different, <laughs> a whole mindset, different yeah. different mindset. You know what I'm saying? A lot of brothers come home from doing a lot of time, they feel like everybody in New York or everybody in the world owes them. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they yeah, they yeah. come out angry. Some of them come out jealous. Some of them come out, you know, you know how it is. Jail yeah. changed people. Yep. People just... You might have been a certain brother when you went to jail, but when you come home, he could either be, make you a better person yeah. or he could make you a worse yes. person. Yeah, you know, yeah, when you yeah. become, you know, conniving and sneaky and, and bitter, you know, and, and bitter, angry, and, you know, yeah. and, you, and I have, trust me, you know, I've dealt with all kinds of shit like that. You yeah. see brothers, you know, some of them is all love. You know, they, mm-hmm. they never change. You know what I'm saying? But some of them come home, they, they, they bitter. They feel like you owe them or... Man, what's up, man? You gonna put me on? I mean, could I do this shit with you? And, you yeah. know, shit like that. And they feel like they're entitled. You feel yeah, me? Entitlement. That's it. That's the word. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the of word. course. You know what I'm saying? And it's, yeah. and, and and that's and that's not the way to think. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That mindset. All you're doing is just you're gonna find yourself back in the same position. <laughs> yeah. Because you're gonna keep doing that until you, you know, I, I need that. You no, know, I need to have that. That's the, nah, fuck that. He got it. Now, fuck, take that. You know, the attitude right there, yep. you can't go nowhere with that one. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of brothers get caught up with that same shit, you know, and it's a damn shame because in jail, they was probably regular guys. Yep. It's so yeah, weird, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 regular yeah, guys going to mess hall, going to program and shit. Then you come home, you want to be a killer. Now you want to be a pusher. Now you want to tell your homeboys that you knew all your, all your life. Now they all doing great. Now you feel like you they owe you anything. You know, you're upset, you know. And it's so weird. So, you know, you deal with all kind of mental, you know, brothers, you know, I'm, let me tell you something, like, uh, 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 the, the mentality and as far as the, 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 the mental, mm-hmm. as far as the, you know, because brothers is fucked up. Brothers need mental, like, they need some help. Mental health, yeah. Yeah, some the mental, mental health. The mental health aspect of the whole no. thing is, plays a big part in it, too. Yeah, mental Definitely. health is important. Yeah. Like, yeah. dudes don't get no... That that good that that old that that sufficient mental health yeah you know they they need in prison all that shit you know what I'm saying you mm-hmm. see regular psychiatrists in jail they don't really actually help you they half of the time psychiatrists look like they more crazy than you yeah yeah you know what I'm saying Word. so you know a lot of brothers come home but they fucked up man you know what I'm saying they mentally fucked up they need help you know and I saying? believe that a lot of brothers when they come home right they still got that criminal mindset they want that instant gratification. And that's when they come out and they like, yo, what's up, man? Yo, what you going to do? Yo, you going to look out? That's that instant gratification. You want your shit right here, right now. Nah, that's not how it works. Yeah. You got to work for this shit, man. Yeah. And that, you appreciate it more when you work for it. Yep. And that's why I tell brothers when they come out, even me with like my channel. It's a small channel. I got 24,000 subscribers. Nah, your shit is lit. But, but not to me, I though. heard about it. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. But to me, I heard about the your bigger joint. I get... I feel the smaller I get because the bigger I get, the more eyes is going to be, and the more small I feel. But that's only going to make me have a bigger heart because I want to help people. So then when people come at me like, yo, ten toe, they hit me up. I put my phone number on my joint. Like, hey, call me right here at this number. And they call me, yo, how I start this, how I start that. If you really need the help, this is what you got to do. You got to do this and that. Send it to me and I'll post you and I'll help push a channel for you if that's what you want to get into. That's if right. you want to get into this, I can help you. If I can't help you, I can direct you to somebody. Right. But I know how it is mm-hmm. to be put in that limelight and people looking at you on the, on the microscope and they're like, mm-hmm. oh, nah, son, how you, you know what I'm saying? Yo, like, it was just given to you. Nah, you still got to work for it. You still got to put some work in. Now you know you got to grind. Yeah, you got to grind. You got to grind that shit, man. So you've been grinding. You've been home since 2012. Yeah. Um, what, what you doing now? What, 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 well, talk to me about your room. show. Talk to me about you know what you've been doing. You know what I mean? How's life treating you and shit? Life you got is kids? beautiful, man. Yeah, I got kids, man. I got a son. I had a son. He's uh six years old now. Okay. I, when I went, my blessing. oldest son is, is 30. Okay. But my youngest son is six. I got two grandkids. That's a blessing. Life is beautiful, man. I'm just living, man. Because mm. I, I look at it like this. Yeah. Um. Your best day in prison 
can never mount to your worst day out here in the streets. So all the good joy that we felt, like, you know, some days in prison, you feel good, mm-hmm. and you up, you can have your counters nice, you getting visits. That shit can't amount to my worst day out here being fucked up or homeless. Who nice. wants to be in there? So that's why I look at my situation as a blessing, always. Just even being here, speaking with a brother like you and knowing the struggle you came through, that I came through, and you able to sit up here today and give a testimony and say, you know what? I can identify with you. I know what it was like. That's right. And I'm no longer that same person I used to be that's before. Right. So that's why today, when I whatever I do, I do the work not only for myself, but I do it for the people, and I've challenged everybody. Like if you like people that know my channel, they know I'm challenging. Hey, I don't give a fuck if you gang banging, you the toughest dude on here, you talk that shit. I'm gonna make a video about you. Mm-hmm. You talking all that talk, you been in jail, you been holding it down. The police said been over, you showed them your balls and spread your ass. Mm-hmm. Shut up. You pussy. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying you pussy in the way like you a punk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You won't yeah, yeah. go, you won't hold it down. I'm saying a way to challenge you. That's right. Don't front on me. Yeah, don't front on me. When you was in front of them in there. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, and I say, you pussy and I was pussy because yeah. I was doing it too. I was bending Facts. over, man. Who wants to go back to that? Who we wants was all abiding by the rules, right? Yeah, we all abide by the rules. We know the rule book 109.10. That's the number one out, out of place. 10. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We know oh, what a tier one, two, and three is. You know what Facts. I'm saying? How you held it down. I don't want to hear about who you cut, who you was rolling with. I want to hear about what you're doing today and who you helping. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say that all of us as a as a platform that has a platform need to come together at least one time and have one big forum where we all can sit down and set up our differences and talk about how we can help those that we left behind, man. That's right. And that's why I like a show, mm-hmm. Dog in the Yard. And behind that dog is that goddamn tower and them barbed wires. That's right. And that's one thing you can never forget, you man. You can never the forget The barbed wires and that tower, Hell you ain't going man. nowhere. And I tell people, and I tell kids, when I, like I just spoke with these kids in the Bronx, so I'm a shula. I said, listen, this is what I want you to do when you go home. I know none of y'all ain't going to do it, but just try it. When you go home, go in your bathroom, lock the door, and don't come out. You know what's so crazy? I talk to these brothers about that all the time, right? I be with a young, bunch of young brothers and shit, even my kids. And I tell them, I say, before you start acting crazy, uh-huh. go to the bathroom and just stay there till tomorrow. See if we can hang out there till tomorrow. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm going to go in and bring you your little breakfast, your little lunch and all that. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers look at me like, yo, <laughs> crazy. fuck no, man. I go fucking nuts. I can't yeah, do yeah. that shit. I can't even think you crazy. Yeah. These young niggas right now will hang they stuff in the fucking bathroom. Hell yeah, My man. little man's will be, they be like, hell no, I ain't doing that shit. That shit is right. driving me nuts. Yeah, so those are things that, cause I, I, even last night we went out and there's always always younger brothers in us. You know that. I mean, mm-hmm. we old heads, man. Yeah, yeah. So all yeah. these brothers, are old young guys, and it seems like I find myself always trying to calm somebody down. Always, you like have I, to. It's always. I'm looking at this brother right, and he's like, "This dude ain't really say much. I swear, dude ain't really say not to the point where you digging in your joint." I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Hold up, you it's dope." Hold yeah. up, you with me, man? Yeah, yeah. Shut up. Yo, this nigga talking shit. You know what I'm saying? Fuck these niggas and all that. Give it to him, Pete. Oh, yo. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You, you gonna give it to him? Give it to him. My man, calm down. You ain't giving shit up, man. You gonna jump back in that motherfucking truck. We out of here, bro. Don't worry about that nigga running his mouth. He drunk, he feeling good. Yep. Leave him alone, man. Yeah. And, and the young brother, yo. The whole, like that moment there, you know how they ain't really, they all oh, hyped yeah. up. He jumped in the truck, and uh, he was like, "Then he looked at me, and I'm in the back with him and shit. And I don't even know this brother. He's he's my he's my man's in the little man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We rolling me in the truck. You know what I'm saying? We about to roll up, show some show some love. You know they had some uh, an event down downtown and shit. Yeah, up and coming artists and shit. So I went down there, you know, show some love, whatever. And um, I don't know him like I said. And in the truck, we back in the truck, he comes and says, he grabs me. He said, Dang, he hugs me. He said, damn, man. Pistol, man, thanks, bro. Thanks. I said, yeah, man, you bugging the fuck out, yeah, man. Yeah, you bugging, man. The fuck are you doing, bro? You know, like, I had to tell him, yo, yo, you bugging, man. Like, don't ever <laughs> do no stunt like that, bro. Especially yeah, yeah. around me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you doing the jumping up and all that. You ain't catching no body around me. My yeah, man, yeah. calm down with that, bro. Like, ain't some brothers feel like they have to impress you. Yeah. You know yep. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's another thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm with Pistol Pete. You know, like we, you know, we ain't going for like a no, no. Like you know, this ain't not knowing I'm the most humblest motherfucker on the planet, man. Mm-hmm. That we ain't got to go all that 
Tony the Tough Ty Tiger shit and all that. We could just, you know, basically, you know, communicate with brothers and all that, man. And it's, and it works out, man. That's you know why. But one of my crazy experiences when I was home, right? I used to go to this spot in the Bronx to party and all that. When I was just like crazy in the party and all that. Yeah. So I'm with my mans and them. You know, they younger, so yeah. they on some. Yeah, some. We popping bottles up in here. We doing it. And I'm like, God damn it, these little motherfuckers. <laughs> and they making a scene and all that. Oh, this energy so is shit. There's other dudes on the other side. You know, now it's going to be animal. They don't like you. They don't like you know what I'm mm -hmm, saying? Mm -hmm. So the dude just walking by. They grilling and all that. My mans are like, fuck is wrong with these niggas? I said, chill, chill, chill. I told him, yo, come in the bar. I said, come in. Go give those dudes over there a drink. Let them know it came from me. Go take a drink. So boom, they went over there, gave me a drink. Boom, they looked. The dudes was looking. They like, I guess they saying like, who from who? Him? Like, yeah, I'm like, yo, salute, brothers. So my man's I'm like, the fuck is you doing, nigga? I'm like, homie, calm the fuck down, man. You about to start some shit. You don't even know what you about to get into. Yeah. You mean to tell me all the time that I done did already? Y'all want to do it? Y'all want to do it too? From day, from then forth, they all cool now. Look at that shit. All cool. Everybody now cool. I go over there, kick with them. What's going on, brother? Yo, where you from? Oh, you're from the X? Where that? Boom, work. Yeah, that's my homies over there. Yo, come here, yo. Boom, yeah, boom. We all brothers, man. It's yeah. all love up in here, man. Yeah. We ain't here to have a good time. Yeah. No, we ain't here to be fighting. Well, you know, that's a good thing. That's the, that's, that's the blessings they, they have to have brothers like us. You know Hell what I'm saying? Yeah. To, 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 to enlighten them and all that. And, and moments like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Because yeah. a lot of us, we probably didn't have that back in the days. You know yeah, what I'm saying? We didn't have that. I ain't going to lie to you. Yeah, yeah. I, had, I had a brother. I looked up to him, but he wasn't the... Like, he wasn't a role model. Yeah. This motherfucker used to put me to fight, you know, teach me how to fight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Run up on us in the hallway. You know, he was he was he was an older dude, obviously. And uh and I ain't really learn shit but just to fight and all that, just to defend myself from him, which I which it was great. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause I learned how to fight. He taught me how to fight, you know what I'm saying? From the hood and all that, and, and it was all good. But at the end of the day, we ain't really had that support that guidance and all that, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, a lot of our, our families and stuff like that, you know, real, real, on some real shit, there wasn't, a lot of parents wasn't even there or lack of education, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of siblings and shit like that. They can't attend to all five of us. Yeah. You know, it's just, it was, it was, it was complicated. Now where, for some reason, I feel like now you have brothers, you know, more outspoken, you know, we, 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 we like, we we sharing our knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, yeah. we we out there because there's a lot of good brothers out there that came home that want to help young brothers out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That speak to young brothers when they pick up the gun or when they're about to flip or when they mm -hmm. arguing with their girl and they carrying it the wrong way. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. We I ain't have that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we definitely. Do, so man. so it's you know so they they should be blessed, man. You know what I'm saying? Our OGs they more like, more like glorified. The yeah. Ugliness of the, the hood. The, and, the, the and ugliness. They, they 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 all either that. dead jail. We ain't get no good results out of them. Yeah. Ain't no, ain't not too many of them that could come out and be like, yo, well, you know, I did this and you know, and here I am. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's I think a lot of times what it takes now for us is just take a phone call. Mm -hmm. Just checking in. Like I got homies, I just call them like, yo, what up? Yo, what's happening? I'm just checking in. You good? Yeah, I'm yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Suicide you check. I love. Yeah, Make yeah. sure you good. There you go. Suicide check. Yeah, suicide check. check. I used to work suicide too. Yeah, yeah. yeah suicide check. Yeah, hit it with the you suicide good? check. Well, yeah, yeah, facts. Man. Yeah, That's man. So, so now you've been home. And you got your own show. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about your show, with, you know. Well, you know, Ten Toes Down, I started out as a- uh, Ten Toes Down. Yeah. I heard about your show, man. Yeah, bro. Yeah, definitely, man. I'm, 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 I'm trying to get my numbers up and help more people. And those are the numbers I want to get up. I don't, I don't really care about like too many subscribers. I want my numbers to be mm. how many people I can help, how many kids I could uh, 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 keep from going down the same path that I went. And I don't want to be like a Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, like we yeah. are the world shit. I want you to look at the ugliness of what I went through mm. and, and the pain, not the pain of just being in prison, the pain that you're going to be putting your family through. That's when right. I went in, my mom's hair was long and beautiful. Now she ain't got no hair. Mm -hmm. When I went in, my son was like this in a diaper. Now he a grown ass man like, yo, what up, daddy? You know, being in prison, going to funerals and shit mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. How it is to be shackled down, moving like a penguin, being on that bus, going upstate, having to take a shit, and the next man is shackled to you, he got to go to the bathroom with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want people to see the ugliness of it. That's Not right. just me being in prison. You got to look at the ugliness of the outside that goes in with you. 
That's your right. family that goes in there with you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sure a lot of people lost a lot when they was in there. You lose your mother, you lose your brother, father. I was blessed to still have my moms. You, some people lose their kids. You know, so, you lose your girl. So your show, so your show is based on what? Like which? 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 I deal with uh, educational responsibility. Most my main thing is accountability. So I usually uh, uh, speak about you know prison stories and different things that happen in right. prison. I speak about the brothers that's out here fronting, talking all that sucker mm-hmm. shit, fronting like you this yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's accountability. Uh, <laughs> the cold, nice. the snitch cold, and all that other mm-hmm. shit. I deal with that. Okay. Then I got a rival. You know, I know. You, I'm sure you probably heard of Hassan Campbell. That's like a, a rival of mine okay. when it comes to the whole YouTube thing. Oh, and, nah. And yeah, so I be beefing with him all the time, you know. But who? Hassan Campbell. Nah, I don't really nah, I don't you know. That, that, yeah, nah. that motherfucker, he like, you know, and my whole thing is uh, all call outs is mandatory. Yeah, facts. So I say to brothers out there when I'm on my channel, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yo. How <laughs> you hit me with that one? Oh, <laughs> call outs is mandatory. Oh, that's how you yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah you man, ain't stepping so back like, for shit. Yeah, you talking all that shit? All right, yeah. let's link up. Where you at? I pull up on you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not pulling up on no gangster. Yo, what's up, son? Yeah. I pull up I pull up on plenty dudes. Yeah. Drive right up, get out. Yo, what up? And they like, yo, what up? I'm like, what's good, man? You all right? You was on camera talking a whole lot of shit. What's up now? What's going on? And I invite a lot of people to fight. Because mm. I want to start the boxing thing, too. Yeah. So all these dudes that's on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, have a misunderstanding and all that. We can fight. Yeah, that's Throw right. the gloves on Throw the side. gloves on. And that's my thing. That's like with Wack 100. Wack be starting all kind of shit with New York dudes. And I'm on his ass every time. I always make a video. You was a bitch. Put these gloves on with me. I will fuck you up. Straight mm. up. I will whip Wack ass. But he don't want to answer that. And, other, and anybody on the YouTube channel, your mm. dudes out here fronting and trying to teach these kids the wrong All right, let's teach them the right way. Let's show them how we used to do back in the days, how we used to throw our hands Put up and fight. Put the gloves on. Let's you know fight. We we'll live another day. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We ain't got to get no gun. These are the facts. guns right here. Let's shoot these. That's facts. But they don't want it. Nah. Nobody want to answer it. Everybody, answer everybody it. internet gangsters and shit like yeah. that. Yeah, and, and we can get the bag from it too. Yeah. And they talk this, I get money, this and that. All right, I got 50 or 100. Whatever number you got, I'm going to match it. Let's get in the ring. Mm-hmm. When it takes off. Nobody want to match up to it. You know what nah. I'm saying? And I want to show these dudes a different way. That you know what? All this shit that you saying, this shit is make-believe. This internet shit, this shit is fake. Yeah. These dudes is fronting. That's yeah. not really how they live. That's not really their lifestyle. Yeah. And Ten Toes be the one that's going to call them out. Be like, what? You did what? Nah, you know what? I, 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 done, I heard about it. Yeah. I'm not going to front. They told me your show was your show was lit, man. They told me, yo, Ten Toes shit is popping. He be putting motherfuckers out there. He I was yeah. like, yeah. yeah. They told man. me about your show and all that. I ain't going to lie. Brothers told me, and uh, uh, I have a homegirl. Uh, she, I think she's supposed to be on your show. So, Kitty? Who? Kitty. Jersey Kitty? Yeah. Oh, she been on my shit a couple of times. Oh, yeah. you know Jersey Kitty? Yeah. Oh, I ain't know that. Yeah, that's my homegirl. I know you, Blue Kitty. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did a couple of joints with her already. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Homegirl. Oh, okay. That's yeah, yeah, up, yeah. Man. My, yeah, yeah. So she, yeah. she, she the one that really told me about like. Oh yeah. Yo, you need to have him on your shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah I ain't gonna yeah. lie. She speak highly. She was like, yo, you need to have. Him on your shit. Yo, Ten Toes Down, nah, that's the show, da da da. He did da da da. You need to have him. Trust yeah. me, P, he's good. He's a good brother. I, I was like, yeah. Yeah, just and, and that's what I what first you. heard of your show. Like, oh, I'm right, I'm through right. Kitty, she, she was like, yo, you need to have him on your joint. It'll be yeah. crazy interesting to have that brother on your joint. He got his own, da da da. I was like, yeah. And that's how that's so crazy how it's just organically. Yeah, that's crazy. Word. Organic. Right? Word. Yeah, man. That shit wasn't even planned or nothing. Nah, just, shit is bugged out, right? Word, man. That's, that's a good crazy, thing, though. Bro. That's all yeah. right, though. I love it, though. Definitely a good thing. You know what I'm saying? But um, it was all good. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And whoever speak bad about you is because the niggas can't understand how you moving. And it's yeah. okay. You know what I'm saying? We ain't here to make everybody happy. Yeah, definitely. You know what I'm yeah, yeah. gonna have people. You know, and I, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna never shit. Tell you not to. St- I'm a rep for you too. Shit, you rep yeah. New York and you out here doing, and you been through this shit and all that crazy. Yeah. Like I'm a, I'm a rep you too. Hell yeah, I'm gonna be on your yeah. side. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fuck well, all honey. that. Well, and um, man. so you been home shit nine years now. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's a, it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing. How man. you feel about um prison reform, man? You well, think it's necessary? Prison, hell yeah, man. Prison reform is very necessary, man. And I think that what well, us, I think what what the, the system is fucking up with is that when we go to prison that a, a, a criminal could never be reformed uh, with that lock them up, throw away the key thing. Mm. I think that we need to be educated as far as with our criminal mentality and why we do the things that we do 
and able to do the things we do as criminals. Everyone in the world has a criminal thought. Everyone. Call the president on that. We all sinners, us. bro. We act on that criminal thought. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We don't care about consequences. We look for instant gratification, and we begin to dehumanize. And, and I think that when it comes to prison reform, we got to take the criminal back to where it started at. Mm. See how when we did the interview? Mm-hmm. Tell me about your childhood. Let's go back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think when it comes to us, we got to go back to where it started. Yeah, you got to go back Why to the so roots and shit. Yeah, because a lot of us... Been abused, sexually abused, All physically kind abused. Of shit. Uh, 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 Man, you came up in group homes. Oh shit, your dad never been around. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Stepdad beat you up all the time. There you go. There you you go. know, all kind of vibes and shit like that. So you always got to go back to the, to the roots. You know what I'm saying? That's why, you know... I created this this platform for brothers like us. You know what I'm saying? Yes, because it, 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 I think it's imperative for us to have this, man. Because a lot of us, we hold this shit inside. You know what I'm saying? And we basically never let it out. Mm-hmm. We don't even have no one to let it out. A lot of us, I mean, meaning like, you know, Spanish, blacks and all that, we don't believe in therapy and all that. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, we know yeah. we starting to get hip to it now, you know, because brothers been, you know, promoting this shit throughout the years. We've been a little bit more open-minded. Yeah. You feel me? With the new, with, with as far as, the new, the new uh, uh, generation is more hip to the to the to the uh, therapists and yeah, all that, help and all that. And all, yeah. right back in the days, we didn't we didn't see yeah. that far. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, a lot of people just get exercise just to get exercise to get that free check. Yep. they don't even get the help. You know what I'm saying? Let's just be realistic, right? A lot yeah. of brothers come home and they still do the same. I know so many dudes. Yo, I'm on I'm on SSI, whatever. I'm like, yeah, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah. You know, are you getting help? You know what I'm saying? Just getting that check. You're just getting the check. You, you know what I'm really saying? But you're not help. even getting that help. A lot of brothers yeah. are still fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And um, so I just felt the need. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you know what? And, and, and I do it. I do it. It's, it's, it's a passion. I love to do this. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I couldn't just, I, I got to, you know, they want me to be a part of all kind of other shit. You know what I'm saying? Just a regular show, just to pop shit and all that. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm not, honestly, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to just pop shit and all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I can't really pop shit anyway. I don't like to, that's like telling on myself anyway, yeah. popping shit all motherfucking day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, you know, we 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 the truth. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to go there. You know what I'm saying? We'll never want to go back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We trying to move forward. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I created, you know, this platform, you know, Dog in the Yard for brothers like us. You know what I'm saying? So we'll be able to have that outlet. So whenever you do have something going on, you know what I'm saying? We could, we could promote this shit on here. We could, we could tell the brothers and the young brothers and sisters out there that you could go through hell, you know what I'm saying? And things might not work out for you for a long time, mm-hmm. but you'll figure it out as long yeah. as you don't give up. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You can't give up. You always got to put your best foot forward and never have nothing to fall back on. I come from the motto of what Denzel said. If you have something to fall back on, you'll never see what you fall on. Fall forward. I want to fall forward. I want to see what I'm falling on. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Me too. So that's why when I do stuff, I put my best foot forward and I put every bit of energy into it because I don't want to be looking back or think negative thoughts like, damn, what if this go wrong? You know, I'm not thinking Murphy's mm-hmm. Law. I'm, I don't care about what's going wrong. I'm looking at what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And you got to send that positive energy out. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we built in. We built Facts. on. We built in energy. Our bodies is made up of energy. Energy of is all around us. And long as you send that positive energy out and know, that's why when I got off that bus after crying, I said, this is it. I'm not accepting no from nobody. You might say no, but his is a yes. So I'm going to keep pushing. It's always a different outlet. Up. That's right. Of course. brother. Of course. Anyway, with that being said, man, um, we, we, you know, we pretty done. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to thank you first and foremost, my brother, for coming. Always. It's a know pleasure, man. Let them know yeah. where to find your show at. You know what I'm saying? Where to hit you and all that so they can find yeah, you. Ten Toes Down TV. You know what it is on YouTube or Ten Toes Down TV 1 on Instagram. There you go. You know, if you, if you, if you need the help, if you need, when it comes to jobs, when it comes to uh, even uh, giving up clothing, if you got children. Like, I got a bunch of clothes. I'm about to do a journal on my channel now. Mm. I got a whole bunch of new sneakers. Jordans, all official joints, clothing and everything that I'm donating. And uh, I always leave my number. And uh, if anybody need the help, I'm here for them. And uh, my number is 680-200-2329. You hit me up, I always answer. If I don't answer, text me. But I'm always there for you, always there for somebody to talk to if you need the help. There you go. Ten toes down. Better look it up. You already know he out there heavy. 
You know what I mean? That's so, right. That's you already know. It's your boy, Pistol Pete. And with that being said, we're going to wrap this shit up, man. Dog in the yard. You already know. Peace. <laughs> You already know what it is, your boy Pistol Pete. Welcome back to Dog in the Yard. First and foremost, I want to thank Ten Toes Down for uh, coming through. You know what I'm saying? Legendary interview, man. I appreciate you coming through, brother. Um, and um, look out for him, man. He out here doing his thing, man. Been out here 10 years. Got his show popping, Ten Toes Down TV. And you already know, look out for him, man. He out here doing his thing, man. And with that being said, you already know, it's your boy Pistol Pete. Stay blessed. <laughs> Dumping or you dipping, nigga? Pick a side. What's your options? Big on 